When I first arrived in Kabul, the city was an intoxicating escape from the war-torn countryside. But by the time I left, the reality had become far more sobering. I arrived in 2013, catching the tail end of a lifestyle fueled by billions in US aid. But corruption and a shaky military handoff soon brought violence to the capital. In 2014, the Taliban attack on a popular restaurant marked a turning point for foreigners. I was only a few blocks away when I lost a friend to that massacre. Kidnappings became routine and attacks grew in scale, killing hundreds at government offices, mosques and at a protest in 2016. With road travel growing more dangerous, our driver once had to maneuver us out of a Taliban ambush. Despite the dangers, I continued coverage for the journal, embedding with Afghan troops to gather insight on what the new administration would face, and traveling in local clothes to report on major offensives when the military wouldn't escort us. In May of 2017, a massive truck bomb killed over 150 people outside the German embassy, only 200 yards from our bureau, shattering our windows and wounding an Afghan reporter. It was frustrating to watch the situation decline after covering the violence for so long. It's hard to imagine how local staffers who'd weathered a lifetime of trauma were carrying on. After four years of reporting, my tour finally ended, but as I left Afghanistan, all I could think about were the people unable to escape the violence, and those still covering a story with no end in sight. My name is Jessica Donati and I'm a foreign correspondent for the Wall Street Journal. <laughs>